Welcome to Excel Match Trick number 1127. Hey, if you want to download this file, click on the link below the video. Hey, we got a great video here. We have a transaction table where we're going to enter amounts. But over in a second table, we're going to track the amounts for these budget categories, the start and the change in current balance. So as we add new transactions, we want our change in current balance amounts to update. Before we see how to create this, let's see how it works. So I'm going to click in the cell directly below the last transaction and enter 6-2 tab. I'm going to enter classroom. This is our budget category. Tab. This is for new paper. Tab. And this is a subtraction of 150 bucks. So I'm going to enter it minus 150 bucks. Now, before I enter this amount, here's the classroom category over here. And I want this to automatically update. So these formulas are going to have to pick up the fact that I entered a new transaction. Watch this. Control Enter, and instantly they update. The current change is 15,150, and there's our current balance. Now, let's go over to the sheet 1127 and create this from scratch. Now, first off, I already typed in the field names for our transaction table and the field names for our formula table. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a some sort of formatting to these field names. Now, watch this. I'm going to add bold there and there. But I want to click the bold button or use the keyboard only one time. So I'm going to select ranges not next to each other. Already selected this. Now I'm going to hold Control and select a second range that is not directly next to it called non-contiguous ranges. Now I could go to Home and Bold or Control B. All right. Now we're going to use the Excel table feature. Here's our field names. And the beauty of the Excel table feature is that as we add new records, the table will have dynamic ranges that the formulas will be able to see. All right. So when we're creating a table for the first time, it's handy to create your first transaction and add any formulas or formatting. In our case, we don't have any formulas, but we have formatting. Then convert it to an Excel table. So you ready? The date is going to be today's date, 7-3-2014. By the way, the keyboard for today's date hard coded is Control semicolon. Tab. Whoops, I have speak cells on Enter. I'm going to turn that off. Budget category, I actually want a drop down that will only allow these budget categories. So we're going to use data validation list. Clicking in the cell B2, data, data validation. Boop, that opens a dialog box. If you do this all the time, you can use the keyboard Alt DL. All right, so the cool thing about data validation is it allows anything by default, but we can say a list. Then in the source text box, I hit Tab to move forward or take your mouse and click. We simply highlight our budget categories. Luckily, it says In Cell Dropdown and Ignore Blanks. I click OK. Now, it's polite to add an error alert. So I'm going to add some sort of error. This is the opportunity for us, the Excel spreadsheet designer, to decide what the error message will say. So I'm going to say Use Dropdown to Select Category. Click OK. First off, let's see if we can, oh, that's amazing. There's a drop down so I can just select uh, classroom. Now watch what happens if I misspell it. Tab. That is so cool. We got to design what it says here. Now you can have a more complete message if you want, but that's pretty cool. Good for the user. Escape. I'm just going to enter this as foundation. All right, now description. I'm going to increase the width of the column. And I'm going to add from the Home Ribbon Alignment Group Word Wrap. So if someone adds a long description, it will automatically wrap. Now remember, date formatting, data validation dropdown, Word Wrap right there. These are all things that are in our first transaction. So when we create our table, these formats and data validation will all automatically be carried down, which is kind of cool. So this first one is. Donation from Timmy, tab. 
Now, amount plus or minus 150. And I'm going to use Control Enter to put the thing in the cell and keep the cell selected because I immediately want to format it. Now we can go to the home number group and use currency, or currency has a keyboard. Control Shift 4. Now we have Date number formatting, data validation, word wrap, and currency number formatting. Our field names at the top, empty cells all the way around, and we're never going to put stuff below this table because it's an automatic expanding table. Click in one cell, go to Insert and Table. Or we can use the keyboard Control-T. My table has headers, very important. I click OK. Now, because this now has dynamic ranges and the formulas over here are going to use the table name, we want to make sure and immediately go to Table Design, Table Tools Design, and over to Properties Table Name. And I'm going to give it a good name like Budget Amounts. There's no spaces. Hit Enter. Now that table from now on will be referred to as Budget Amounts. Now we can see our name right there, but there's another location that we want to look at. We want to go to Formulas, Name Manager. Click on that. Now this will show you everything from print area to table names. That icon means table. Here's our budget amounts. The budget table one is from our answer sheet on the red sheet here. All right, click Close. Now we want to enter a transaction, and there's a few ways to enter transactions. In general, if you're entering lots of transactions, you're using the Tab key. They've designed it. If the last cell in the table is selected, if you hit Tab, it automatically adds a new record. All right, so this is going to be 6 slash 1. And now check this out. Remember we said that that number formatting is carried forward? So if you're in the current year, you do not have to enter 14 or 2014. It'll automatically be added. Tab. Now we can use our drop down. Here, this one is for classroom. Tab. New tables. Tab. Uh, 15,000. So as a negative. Tab to add our new record. 6 slash 2. Tab. Operations. Tab. Maintenance. Tab. Minus. 22,501, tab, 6-15, tab. Now, I'm going to enter a duplicate. Data validation dropdowns do require that you use the dropdown. But watch this. I've already entered operations. So as soon as I type in O, this is not part of the table feature or data validation. It's autocomplete. It's actually looking above. And because I typed an O, it thinks I want the word from above that starts with an O, which in this case I do. So as soon as I see that, I can hit Tab Tank, Tab minus 3500. Now I'm going to hit Control Enter, because I don't want to enter to add the new re next record. Now. That little pound sign there means that the column is not wide enough. So I'm going to come up here and want to, with my cursor between A and B, I click and drag. All right, so now we want to come over and create the formula table. Now I want to select this whole table here. So instead of clicking and dragging like this, I'm going to use a keyboard to highlight the current table. Select any one cell and use Control asterisk on the number pad or Control Shift 8 to highlight your table. Now let's add some borders. Home, drop down for all borders. Another way to do that, and it's great. Right click, and there's this new mini toolbar with all the most common actions that people do, all borders. All right, so our starting amounts, I'm just going to enter these. All right, so I've entered them. These are going to be dollars. These will be formulas, but they're going to have dollar amounts, so I'm going to highlight the whole range, and use the keyboard for currency. But notice up here, that's the number group. I'm going to use Control Shift 4. And not only do we see the number format, we can see it changed up there. Now, these cells change in current. I'm going to select them and add a color to indicate that those cells contain formulas. All right, so we're going to do our first formula. And here's what we need to do in this cell, H2. I need to look through this column, find all the foundations, and then get all the numbers and add them. 
down here for operations, I need to look through this column, find all the operations. There's two of them, but get the numbers from this amount columns. This is going to involve adding not all the numbers from this columns, but just some of them. In fact, we're using summing with one condition or one criteria. So here I need to add for operations. Here I need to add for foundations. The perfect function for that is the sum ifs functions. Now I'm actually going to scoot this a little bit and change this just so we can kind of fit this in the screen better. All right, you ready? We're going to do a formula. You start every formula with an equal sign. And we're going to use the built-in function sum ifs with an s. Sum ifs, it's highlighted in blue. I can hit tab to automatically put that parentheses in. Now there's a sum range, a criteria range, and criteria. Now the way to remember how to fill this function out is to read the screen tip. Sum range, those are the numbers. Now normally we would do something like D2 colon D5. Now notice the blue is highlighting the right range and the formula would work right. But we want to actually use the table formula nomenclature. Now it's going to look all fancy, but we don't need to know anything about it. We simply highlight just the number cells, not the field name, and instantly we see, so let's scroll over here, table name and in square brackets the field name. That is beautiful. That's why we named our table, right? But right in our formula we can see we got amounts plus or minus from the budget table. Those are the numbers to add. I'm going to type a comma. Now watch the screen tip. Comma, it's bold. Now it's telling you I want criteria range. Criteria range means you have to highlight the column with all of the potential criteria. So now look at that. We have budget amounts table, budget category, field. That is beautiful. Now these square brackets mean field name. You'll also see them in other Microsoft products like Access and Power Pivot. Now comma, criteria. Notice it doesn't say criteria range, so it just wants one condition. I'm going to select one, two cells to my left. That says F2, but it's really always one, two cells to my left. So as I copy it down, it'll automatically move. So when I'm down in the row for operations, the criteria will be operations. Now let's close this parentheses off. Notice the screen tip goes away. Control Enter to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell selected. There's a little box in the lower right hand corner. That's called the fill handle. If we move our cursor above it, when we see that little crosshair or angry rabbit, as I like to call it, that angry rabbit, that means you can double click and automatically send your formula down. It knew to stop because that's the last bit of data in the column. Now we need to change the column width, so I come up between H and I, click and drag. Now we could click and drag, Control Z to undo that, or you can simply double click to best fit. Now let's go to the last cell and hit the F2 key to put it into edit mode. Notice it's got the two columns correct, but check that out. That relative cell reference, that little purple lavender cell, is looking exactly at the right criteria. Escape. Click in the cell above F2, operations. What is the escape? What's the total? 57,501. Now when you're building this right off the bat on a small data set, here's a cool trick. We can highlight just the numbers for operations and then look down to the status bar. And sure enough, it shows you the sum. That's just for the highlighted ranges. Watch this. If I highlight all the range, it'll give me the total. Just a single one for classroom, 15. It's not a range, so it doesn't highlight it. All right, so we have our sum ifs adding correctly. Now, the current balance is simply starting balance plus the change. As we copy that down, notice when if we're adding a positive, it adds. But when we get to a negative, it'll add a subtraction. So it'll be just like subtraction. This formula will work. Equal sign starts any formula. Click on the cell, two cells to the left plus one cell to my left. Those are relative cell references. So when we Control Enter to put the formula in the cell and keep the cell selected, I move my cursor. And when I see my angry rabbit, double click and send it down. Immediately click in the last cell and hit F2 to put it in edit mode. And we can see the relative cell references two to my left plus one to my left. 
working perfect. Now let's add some new transactions. Last time we were in the last cell in the last transaction and we hit tab. You don't have to do that. You can simply come exactly one row below the last transaction and start typing. 6 slash 2, when I hit tab, instantly a new row in the table is created. This is for classroom. New paper, tab, minus 150. Tab to add a new line, 5 slash 2. Tab, foundation, tab. And watch this donation from Sue. Autocomplete is trying to be polite, but it sees a D above and thinks we want donation from Timmy. So you got to be careful sometime with autocomplete. I'm going to make sure to enter donation from Sue. Tab 500, Control Enter. Instantly, our table is updating. Now, we'd like to be able to print this. Let's do our keyboard for print, Control P. We can see Print Dialog Box and Print Preview are together. That is beautiful. I can instantly see it's printing across two pages when I click the Forward button. That's not at all what I want. I'm going to click Escape to close this. I actually want to always print just this table, not this. So we're going to use Page Setup. Page layout. There's some page setup in the page setup group. You can use this launcher to open up page setup. I'm going to use the Alt keyboard, Alt PSP. Here we go. Let's do landscape. We want to adjust maybe to 150. Margins tab. This was the page tab. We'll go to margins. We want to horizontally center it. Header and footer. Now, there's nothing in the header. We're not going to use the built-in. We could use custom header there. There's nothing here in the preview. Let's look at this drop-down. There's a great page 1 of question mark. That means if you have 1 of 10, it'll say 1 of 10, 2 of 10. I'm going to say page 1 of question mark. Even though I only have 1, it's going to say page 1 of 1. Sometimes that's handy. You know you have a pile of papers. You drop them on the ground. You found the 1, you know there's only 1 in this group. Now, I want to add something to the left and to the right. So now I'm going to use custom footer. And there's some great built-in features here. First one is I'm just going to type the foundation name tab. You can see that was the code put in for page one of question mark tab. And here we're going to use the built-in date. So watch this. I'm going to click on date. That's the code. When this prints out, it'll always put today's date. I'm going to type a space dash space and then click on time. These are dynamic. It'll always print out today's date and the current time. And this is too. If we were to add more pages, this would be dynamic. Click OK. We can see our preview looking good. Let's go to the last tab, Sheet. And we want to make sure and designate that our print area is only this little table right here. There's the range. Now we can click OK. Control P. Absolutely beautiful. Look at that, page one of one. We have our footer at the bottom centered on the page. Beautiful. I'm not going to print, so I'm going to click Escape. All right, that was a little bit of fun with tracking budget category transaction amounts in an Excel table. We have our change and current balance formulas over here, and we even did page setup. All right, we'll see you next trick.